Are we live? Yes. Hello. Okay, I don't see anybody on. Okay, I see Crapsy. If you're on and you can hear me, please send a wave. Facebook and YouTube, guys. I'm sorry, I don't really know how Facebook works. But if <laughs> if it's if you're on, please send a comment. Let's know you can hear us. Let's know that you are on and you're connected. Oh. Just give us some, um, give us a few minutes. We're trying to sort out some technical stuff here. Vera, I see you. How are you? Um, I see a Timothy and a Kingsley. Um, I thought this was for women. <laughs> okay, Kingsley, thank you. You can hear me. Good to know. We're still having challenges with Instagram. So give us a few minutes, please. Sorry, we're having a bit of drama here. Um, with Instagram, let me see now. Um, hold up, I'm trying to remember. I'll try to remember. Um, no, we can use the other iPad if we're having challenges with this iPad. The red iPad um, must be somewhere around. Um, Sorry guys, just give me give me a couple of minutes please. Now we're cracking the iPad. Okay. <laughs> if we can't get Instagram working in the next few minutes, we'll just start and um, find a way to reach the IG people. Oh dear. I just should be cool. Should we use this one? Sorry. Let me help. Okay. What's up then? I'm seeing a lot of guys. Um, guys, this is for women. Al Hassan, Nana Kwesi, Rafael, Makofi. No, guys cannot join Thirsty Woman. It's for women. You can you can stay around for the launch, but no, you can't. <laughs> this is for women. Otherwise, we can use this one. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having a few challenges with my devices. Um, um, no, I don't have any plans, Ali, to, to organize an, a mentoring scheme for young men. Um, I think I was sent to women, not to men. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll find maybe we'll find some people to organize a scheme for the young men but this is a mentoring scheme mentoring and coaching platform for women 
Thank you. Thank you, Karim. This must be the devil. I don't know why we're having this challenge. With Instagram of all places. Instagram is my constituency. Can we use my phone? Okay. Okay. Instagram. Are the Instagram guys on? So sorry. Sorry we're late. Kalani, you cannot come on this platform and insult me. Not today. <laughs> Be nice. You should be praying for the challenges to go away. Instagram guys, are you there? Hold up guys, give me a minute please. What page are you on? This one, the Fini Power. Just use my phone. <laughs> Kalani, be nice. Pray for me. <laughs> Pray that Thirsty Woman lunch goes well. <laughs> I think we're getting Instagram sorted now. Um, and then we can start. We've lost seven minutes. Yeah. Okay. Hi, people on Instagram. I'm really sorry. We had a few um, connection issues with the devices. Um, I think we're sorted now. Um, so welcome, everyone, to the launch of Thirsty Woman. Now is my laptop that is refusing to charge. Um, See, the devil is really... If you need power out today, it's not charging. Okay, we'll just continue and we'll get that sorted. So, yes, Vera, the devil is a real liar. <laughs> um, hi, Mona. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Afrakuma. I see you. Hi, Omolade. I see all of you. Thank you so much for joining us. So, Thirsty Woman, we started thinking about this from, I think, last year. Um, it came up in one of my conversations with the young ladies I am privileged to work with. And we, they were, I was realizing that young women were going through a lot of challenges. Hi, Petra, I see you. <laughs> um, a lot of challenges, some familiar to me, which I'd gone through. Um, some of the challenges had to do with work issues. Some had to do with just life issues. A lot of the problems had to do with relationships, love, marriage, um, meeting the right person. Um, and in a lot of those conversations, I also realized that women were sticking around relationships that they really should have walked out of. And then some of those very difficult conversations came from the role of the church. And there was a general feeling like the church, almost like the church was failing us women and they were not dealing with our issues and you know our concerns. And um, I get, also get a lot of requests to mentor, to coach, and I'm not sure I have the time to do a one-on-one -on -one with everyone. 
So we decided to create this platform where we can mentor, where we can coach, where we can encourage each other, where we can support each other. So Thirsty Woman is a watering well for women. It is where we come to um, nourish ourselves, where we gather like women of old at the well to fetch water, but this time we're fetching water that hydrates our souls, water that you know nourishes our spiritual life, water that encourages us and we encourage each other to um, create our goals and to run the race with passion and to find our purpose. Um, so we are creating a circle of support for women. We are creating a circle where we can let our guard down and talk about the issues that really bother us, that affect us. We're creating a safe place where if you are having major issues that are impacting on your life and your well-being and your mental health, you can always reach out to someone. You can reach out to me or to one of the people I'll be bringing on board and you can engage with us. At least you will know that you have somebody to support you, to pray with you, to hold your hand, basically to help you survive the, the storm. Um, in terms of the structure, so we're going to be doing monthly webinars, most likely on the third Sunday of each month and between the hours of 5 to 7 p.m. And so when you sign up and you register, you need to know that you need to commit at least two hours every month to the webinar. And I'll give you an insight into some of the things we'll be discussing in the webinar. And so during the webinar, you can, if you want to come on um, anonymously, you would, you would need to let us know and you would, um, we would protect your anonymity. So you will join us during those webinars and we'll be discussing very heavy topics. I'm gonna run you through some of the things we'll be talking about in the next 12 months. So really it's gonna be a journey of 12 months and it will start with the monthly webinars. Other than the webinars, um, from February, we would have um, a five minute daily video from me, which is supposed to encourage you, which is supposed to strengthen you. And this is all, the, the five minute um, video nuggets are also going to um, talk about the topics that we'll be dealing with in the webinars. For today's lunch, I have some three phenomenal ladies, maybe more, I'm still waiting for more to accept to join in, who would come in and just um, speak to us um, about the topics, the, the challenges we're dealing with. There's a Kene who is a, a, a coach for women in the USA, iconic women, um, women's coach, and I'll put out all their details tomorrow on um, my social media handles. So Kene will join us. Michelle McKinney Hammond needs no introduction. She's um, the super talented writer, minister, singer, actress. Michelle would, is my big sister and she'll also be joining us shortly. And then we have Miss Monacote, a phenomenal woman, former deputy minister of finance, brilliant woman, corporate finance expert. And she's got just so much content. She's one of the people who will also be joining us subsequently during the webinars when we deal with women's health, um, wealth issues. So these three ladies, and I'm hoping Dr. Bell Smith, who should have known that she'll be dragged in, I hope she'll be able to join us as well. So I'm just gonna take you through the topics we'll be dealing with in the 12 months ahead. And after that, I would bring on some of my guests to just speak a word or two. So in the month of January, the webinar for this month, we're going to be looking at wounded women. Why are we doing this? Because a lot of women are moving around with emotional wounds. And until those wounds are healed, you cannot um, live your best life. You cannot fulfill purpose. And those wounds affect everything else in your life. They affect your relationships, whether with um, partners or with your children or with your peers. They, they affect your, your, your work, they affect your advancement, they affect your spiritual life. So the first month we're dealing with wounded women. And the, the, the purpose, the, what we seek to achieve in the month of January is to help women identify their wounds, identify the scars that they bear, identify the, 
excess emotional baggage that they are carrying. Um, so some of these wounds are childhood wounds. Maybe parents said something they shouldn't have said. Um, some mean auntie. I remember I had one auntie who used to call me bag of bones. And now look at me now. And so she made me go on this journey to try and fatten myself up until I overdid it. But um, so those kinds of comments. Um, we have um, wounds from childhood. Some are teachers said things or teachers were just mean to us. We have um, even abuse from siblings that affect us. We have wounds from relationships. A lot of women, maybe some man betrayed you, some man let you down, some man abandoned you. Sometimes they abandon you and the children. And these are all wounds that we carry. So we're gonna be dealing with emotional wounds. Wounds that make you feel unworthy, wounds that make you feel not good enough. Sometimes it's in-laws who rejected you and they made you feel less than. We have wounds from society. Anybody who's been in public service can attest to that. I mean, the attacks, the name calling, the abuse. These are all wounds that we carry. And um, there's also wounds from sexual abuse. Um, women who have been raped, women who have been victims of sexual assault carry a lot of wounds. And if we do not deal with these wounds, they inhibit your progress, they, 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 they stunt your growth, so to speak. So the goal in the month of January is to identify these wounds um, and find a path to healing and give you prayers and affirmations and the tools to help you heal. And so in the month of January, I have some phenomenal guests who are coming. I think January is different from the other months. January, we're probably going to do three webinars. So we're going to do one that deals with um, loss, whether it's um, widowhood or whether it is lost by abandonment, and we're going to deal with divorce and the wounds from there. We're also going to deal with all these issues, generally wounds, and then we're going to deal with um, wounds from sexual abuse, wounds from parents, wounds from um, domestic violence in the month of January. So we'll probably do two or three webinars. In the month of February, we're dealing with um, identity and self-worth. Um, a lot of women have issues around valuing themselves, loving themselves, um, understanding their identity, um, rejecting labels that have been put on them by parents, by close people, or even by society, and just learning to discover their purpose and to live a life of purpose. So that's what we're gonna be doing in February. In March, we focus on words. Because words are so powerful, we need to really spend time understanding the power of our words and how words can help us frame our lives. So the words that we speak over ourselves, we speak over our children, we speak over our husbands, we speak over our loved ones, whether um, a lot of times unconsciously, those, all those words have power and they have impact. We also deal with um, how we can now use words not just to be, to move from not just being conscious about and intentional about the words we speak, but actually using words as a tool to create the lives that we want to see. So we're gonna deal with that. And um, so how to learn to apply words of affirmation, words over our children, over our finances, that's what we're gonna be doing in the month of March. So at the end of that month, we will all understand the creative force of words and learn how to use it as a tool, deploy it effectively. In April, we're looking at the world of work, the challenges that women have around work how to advance, how to know yourself better, know what your strengths are, know what your weaknesses are, and know the strengths and the weaknesses of the people you're working with. Know your boss, how to survive difficult situations at work, how to survive um, the boss who just hates you, um, impossible assignments, uh, managing timelines, and creating a network that helps you succeed at work, and indeed building bridges and relationships in the workplace. In May, we deal with a very interesting topic that we call your waterers and your wasters. Um, everybody around you is either somebody who waters you, who supports you, who nurtures you, and who helps you to grow, or they are a waster, they are taken out of your life. And it does not mean that if you identify that somebody is a waster, it means you eliminate the person from your life. No, even with the wasters, there's a, there's a strategy for deploying them. So how do you, there's a strategy for getting value out of wasters. So 
in the month of May, we look at waters and wasters, and then we'll help you conduct a friend's audit, evaluate the people around you, but also evaluate your friend yourself as a friend, because um, what you want to see in people, you should also be able to see it in yourself. And then we'll create a strategy, craft a strategy for minimizing the impact of wasters in your life and maximizing the good effect of waters in your life. In the month of June, we deal with our worries and our fears, and we would show you how to convert those worries and to move from being a warrior to being a warrior. So whether it is through goal setting or through prayer or whatever, you would move from being a warrior to being a warrior because fear is not of God. And so we would give you the tools to help you do that. In July, because we are women, we will deal with fruitfulness, wombing. Um, we would look at when the Bible says be fruitful, it's not just about physical children, it's also about birthing dreams, birthing aspirations, birthing destinies, birthing visions. And we would be doing that with Michelle. Michelle, I hope you're listening. <laughs> so we're looking at the spiritual power of womanhood. What does it truly mean to be a woman? What superpowers did God give women and how are we gonna deploy those superpowers? That's what we're doing in, in, in um, July. And I'm sure most of us will find that we're living lives that are subpar. We're not living up to the, the goal that God set for us when he was creating us. And so that's what we're doing in, in, in July. We're dealing with fruitfulness, wombing, birthing dreams, visions, aspirations, and destinies. In August, I'm hoping we can have Mrs. Mona Corte on for the webinar in August. And in August, we're going to talk about wealth. We need to understand wealth. We need to understand how money works. And we need to understand that money is not um, a finite item. And so you don't need to envy other people. You actually have the power to create your own wealth. Um, oh, somebody said I call Facebook pedestrian. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I repent. So, but we're dealing with wealth and then we'll look at the, 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 the limiting beliefs around wealth and the, 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 what it means to have a wealthy mindset and how to create wealth. But we'll also look at going beyond creating wealth to leaving a legacy for the generations to come. So it's like a generational um, wealth transfer. So we'll look at effective tools for wealth creation and preservation and transfer. In September, we're going to talk about weathering the storms and crisis in life. Um, we will teach you the strategies for understanding storms, preparing for storms, surviving storms, and even thriving through and after storms. And by the time we finish, you'll learn to appreciate the value of storms and you'll create your own um, disaster recovery and storm survival plan. So that's for September. In October, we're looking at watering wells. You would understand what wells signify spiritually, and you would identify what is a well for you. What works for you as a well? What is the value of a well in your life? Why do women need wells? And you also know that you should not be running on empty. Women tend to give, 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 and then the Belinda, I love you, and you're going to come on in a few minutes. <laughs> and how to um, identify your watering wells, the things that nourish your soul, your spirit, and your body, and learn to plan to put yourself to ensure that you get watered all the time, as regularly as you need to. Otherwise, you just may lose it. Um, so we'll teach you the beliefs that can make that cause you to run on empty because a lot of women think that self-care is wrong. So we'll help you understand that it's not wrong and create a self-refresh plan for yourself. In November, we're gonna deal with wisdom, winning with wisdom. And the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. We're going to understand what that means. What is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? If you are educated and you have all the degrees, you probably have knowledge but what you need to add to that is wisdom. So um, we're gonna show you how to apply wisdom in your career, in your family life, in your financial life, 
in your spiritual life and in everyday life. And you will see that it makes a significant difference. Um, part of wisdom is emotional intelligence and emotional mastery. So those are some of the things we'll be looking at that. And maybe we'll create a wisdom vision board just to start preparing us for the next year. By the time we get to December, you would realize that you've gone from being a wounded woman to being a whole woman. And we'll tell you what wholeness means. When um, in the Bible, Jesus said, woman, thou art whole. What did he mean? What is the difference? And it, it doesn't mean just um, the lack of physical ailments in your body. So there's a wholeness is soundness of mind, soundness of spirit. And so we'll get into all that. And we'll tell you what you need to eliminate from your life to preserve your wholeness and to remain whole. And then, of course, we'll start planning. We'll do a vision board together and start praying and planning for 2022 if God gives us life. So that's the journey plan for Thirsty Woman for this year. I realize it's almost an hour. If Instagram goes off, please wait. We'll reconnect immediately. And then we would... Um, continue with the discussion. But I'll be happy to take any questions you have. And if any of my wonderful ladies are available who want to speak, the ones I spoke to earlier, who want to share a word with the ladies, please let me know. Mona, Michelle, and um, Ekene, let me know if you're available and you're ready to come on. So that's really what Thirsty Woman is about. We want to build a vibrant community of women who love each other, who wish each other well, and who support each other, and who are ready to encourage each other on this spiritual and emotional journey to, to wholeness. Okay, I think I can, let's see. Um, so I'm looking forward to all of you joining, all of you subscribing um, to the webinars as well as the nuggets. Hi, Kenne. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we don't have a canal on Facebook. Sorry? You're doing both Facebook and Instagram? Yes, I'm doing Facebook and YouTube, I think, yes. And Instagram. It's a very complicated set of these young ladies have done. I believe you. Facebook, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know if you can hear the conversation. Let me increase the volume. You may not be able to see a canal, but you can hear. Yes, hello. Hi, Bertha. Hi, everyone. Shar, what a wonderful initiative. I was listening to all the different things you have rolling out this month. I know. I was already full this year, rather. I was full just listening to it. Oh. Thank you. Together. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's in our communities in ourselves. So as soon as you told me about it, I was like, I, I want to come on and support you. You're such a darling. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Too. And I'm hoping you come on. Let me see. I have you scheduled for the month of um where did I have a canon now? Um I think yeah, in February. February, we're talking about I have you on for February and we'll be talking about issues around identity, self-value, self-worth, purpose. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And you know, to your point about what you were talking about the impetus for putting this together, the idea of being wounded, yes. the reality that so many of us are wounded and that we are continually wounded mm -hmm. by different things that we go through and yes. that we have to be intentional about our healing. Yes. Right? And the idea of, I loved how you were sharing the story and what was coming up for me was wounded, right, to worthy, right? Yes. Wounded to hold. To so hold, yeah. you know you're whole, you're worthy. Right? Exactly. You're worthy, so you can step up. Mm -hmm. Do the work that God is calling you to do. And Precisely. Yeah. So kudos to you, you know, and kudos to every single one of you guys that is choosing to make the investment in yourself. Yes. Because that's the power move, right? Yeah. That's the power move. So many of us stay in a place of woundedness. And then what woundedness does, it makes you feel as if you don't have any power. True. But it makes you feel defeated. And it makes you become addicted to being a victim. Exactly. Day, yeah, right? Exactly. And I meet so many like that. Yeah. And you don't even realize it. We had a um, talk with some of, the, some of the ladies in my community. And I asked them, this year, what are you releasing? 
what are you embracing and what are you amplifying? Mm -hmm. And one of the ladies said, and it was such a powerful thing she said, I am releasing being a victim. Exactly. You know, you can get so used to an ailment that you carry it like a crutch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's why Jesus asked the man, you know, by the beautiful, uh, what is it? The pool of it. Yeah. You want to be well. Yes. Because you can become so used to it. It's, fact, it, it, it can become a career for some people. It's actually a job. Yes. <laughs> but it's, and it's the only way you know yourself. Yeah. Like the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. You know, we don't even know her name. She became known by her, her condition, yeah. Problem. Yeah. Yes. The infirm but woman, yeah. Yes. We actually yes. talked about that in the nuggets for this month. When you allow the condition to become your label and your name. So you get so attached to it because that's all you know. 100%. Yeah. And in order for you to move, one of the big things you can do is sign up for a program like this. Yes. But you don't have to know where you are. You don't have to know the full like the full journey. But you have someone who is saying, I'm willing to walk with you. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to be your guide. I'm willing to bring all the resources you need to help you as you go on your journey. Because... Wounded, the the, the, what I've seen is um, when you when people come to you and say, oh, coach me or mentor me, and maybe it's in, the, it's in a career-related area, work-related area, you now start finding out that there are so many things affecting them in other areas of their lives that no matter how much coaching you put into them, they cannot step up to their best selves because they have all these wounds and limiting beliefs and things that are holding them down. So... When we sat and we thought about it, we said, you know what, we need an entire plan that covers the gamut of issues from emotional to um, intellectual. Because you can give all the knowledge, but without the, the self-awareness and the limiting beliefs and all that, it doesn't make an, any impact. Yeah. 100 You know you're speaking my language. <laughs> and I believe firmly in the inner work. And in fact, today... It's funny, today I came across some, um, you know, the world, there's so many people that are, are Where's the iPad? Maybe we need to hotspot from the iPad. We're losing connection. You speaking up? Yeah. I can hear you. I'm not seeing you. Just sit back. Relax. Can you hear me now? Yes. It's frozen again. Oh. We're losing a cane.
Come and sit by me. <laughs> okay, Instagram is back on. Okay. Is Facebook back on? Okay, so we've we've basically been talking about the journey, and I can I thank you so much for joining us. I'm so sorry the internet messed us up. I need to find Michelle and Mona, and my darling Dr. Bell. No, you can come as a shadow. Don't worry. <laughs> um, okay. Um, for those who are asking, how can you be a member? There are links in the Facebook yeah. profile and Instagram profile, and you can um, go there and register. And from this week, we would send you details about the first um, um, webinar we're planning. So if you want to join, there are links in my bio. I'll oh, see Dr. Belke. There are links in my bio, and... Um, we would you need to register so we have my your your email address and then we would send you a message so thank you so much i can uh, vera you are so partial it's only dr bell you see with three hearts <laughs> see your life every time you see dr bell this is what you do you throw me away as soon as you hear dr bell boom three hearts <clears throat> so what yeah so we talked about what we're going to be doing through the year and just for ladies who would be joining, there's going to be lots of exercises. And um, we are all going to be students in the class. We are all going to be learning these things. We're all going to be doing this journey together. So um, even the facilitators we're bringing on are just coming to share their experiences. So if, for instance, someone is coming to talk about divorce, she's talking about the pain of divorce, and we're all going to help her heal and learn the lessons for ourselves. Um, same thing as um, somebody who's coming to talk about loss, whether it is loss of a relationship. We are all going to learn together and craft a path of healing for all ourselves. Same as um, issues around um, sexual abuse, rape. There are a lot of women who have gone through this and are even unable to share the pain with anybody, but they are carrying this wound and these burdens by themselves. And so we'll create a space where we can talk about these things and learn to heal together so we can move on to the to to you know doing bigger and better things with our lives so um what have i not said team thirsty woman is there anything i've left out i've gone through the month schedule well say what about thirsty woman i've been sharing <laughs> this plan with you i've been talking to you all the time about this <laughs> you're tired of hearing me <laughs> This, this is such a setup. <laughs> like, only your sister will bring you on <laughs> without notice. With no makeup on, <laughs> not notice. <You> show. <laughs> I am. I'm very excited about this two woman, and yeah. because daily I realize that so many people have thirst, and even the guys have been asking, <laughs> "What about their thirst? They are also thirsty." <laughs> But first, we're starting with the ladies, and it's very exciting, and um, the topics are phenomenal. We've been, you know, every day we get, like, something. New ideas. Some yeah. new idea to add to it. So um, looking forward to speaking. When, what month am I on? You were in, um, let me see. I think you were, where did I put you? Watering Wells. Watering Wells. October, Wells. your birthday month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, one of the things I need to say about Thirsty Woman is how did we come up with the name Thirsty Woman? So Thirsty Woman is named after one of my favorite characters in the Bible. <laughs> the woman Jesus met at the well in Samaria. And um, if you recall, he asked her, um, he asked her for water and she didn't, she was like, well, why are you asking me for water? You Jews don't talk to us Samar Samaritans and all that. And eventually it was like, if you knew the water that I could give to you, it's water that you would never thirst. I mean, really, it's only God that can satisfy all our needs and our desires. And, okay, Mona sent a request. And subsequently, uh, when Jesus asked her, no, I'm looking for Mona. When Jesus asked her um, to go and call her husband, she said she didn't have a husband. And he said, you've spoken well because um, 
the man you are with now is not your husband and you she had been married to five <laughs> and i was very fascinated that we could have a woman in that era who had been through five, five husbands, husbands and was living with A lot of women, we think that the answer is in men, and it is good to or be to love and to be loved. Yes, but relationships would never satisfy your thirst. Otherwise, the woman—I mean, she had gone through five husbands and she was still thirsty. She is the original thirsty woman. <laughs> she had been looking in the wrong place for that hydration. That. Um, for her quench to be for her thirst to be quenched and so thirsty woman is named after her because um we are thinking that women are thirsty in fact we're not thinking we know yeah. that women are thirsty in so many areas we're thirsty for love we're thirsty for affection we're thirsty for intimacy we're thirsty for financial independence and wealth. We are thirsty for significance, yeah. acknowledgement, um, success. Yeah. We are thirsty to make an impact. We are thirsty to raise good families. So women are thirsty and we juggle a lot of things. We are mother, wife, daughter, sister, um, friend, worker. worker, and we want to do everything perfectly. So we're always dehydrated. And so that's why we, we, we created Thirsty Woman, just to help women come together and address all these issues in their lives. And so we are really looking forward to um, all of you joining us on this journey. Can you stop blowing kisses on my <laughs> talk? Sorry. <laughs> thirsty Woman. <laughs> <I'm> thirsty. <laughs> so we're really looking forward to... Um, um, to 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 walking this journey with as many women as possible, but please, um, there's a caveat. If you know that you are unambitious, if you know that you are very satisfied with <laughs> your life in every respect, if you know that you are not thirsty, if you know that um, you don't aspire for more, you don't want to do more, you don't want to have a bigger vision for your life. Please don't register. You will be disturbing the rest of us who have plans and ambitions and who are thirsty and want to go somewhere. Um, but if you are thirsty, this is the place for you. This is your watering well. And um, anybody who comes there and creates any kind of toxicity or makes anybody else feel unworthy is going to be removed. We'll refund whatever you paid and we'll send you packing. We want positive, happy people or people who are, even if you're not happy, but you, you're striving to happiness. It is a confidential space and you'll be required to sign an oath of confidentiality because it has to be a safe space. That is not the place to come and pick filler or gossip and go and spread in town. And for the women who are going to be on it, if you need to share a story and you need to, you may have to change your idea on the webinar for that purpose, we will accept that. Change it.
boss in Ghana is. I know what a former is. I think that would be me, but formal, no. Informal, yes. Um, and um, any other questions? How can one the pain and deal with it? Well, come join the group and you'll find out. Um, we miss you. Who are we? Okay. Um, good evening to you too. We miss you. Uh, at the, excuse me, at the last family meeting, or <laughs> you're thirsty for a lot of things. I know, so am I. I'm thirsty for a lot of things too. Um, So um, please, how do we join the group? Link is in the bio. Please register and um, we'll send you emails. We need your email address because it's going to be structured. Since Facebook is acting up. Link for registration is in the bio. So we'll need your email address. Happy New Year. I haven't seen you this year. I know. So when are we getting together? This is ridiculous. Michelle, pick a day next week. Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> on me. Okay. You're on. <laughs> Facebook, guys, I'm really sorry. This is not my fault. I am. This is a thirsty woman team who did this. I'm sorry you can't see Michelle, <laughs> but she's looking amazing. And so you can just eavesdrop on the conversation. Not my fault. <laughs> Should I turn the camera that way? No, it may work. No, see. <laughs> Why are you all ducking? Can they see? <laughs> they can't. Well, I tried. <laughs> you should see my team scrambling. Okay. <laughs> Ciao. Talk to me. Yeah. 
Were you listening? Did you hear the plan, the rollout plan for Thirsty Woman? I just got on. So oh, okay. You are speaking. Okay. So we're going, taking a journey from January, from dealing with wounded women through um, to um, December, where we have whole women. And somewhere in July, I have your name on my piece of paper, where we're talking about wombing, birthing, dreams and destinies, fruitfulness, understanding the spiritual power of womanhood and the ability to womb and birth destinies. I have you penciled. And note, I did this before your book came out and I didn't know about your book. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You were in the spirit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I tell them I'm a prophetess, they don't believe me. <laughs> I believe you are. I believe you are. You know, prophets run together. I don't know. I don't run around screaming from I you bless say it, Lord. But when I see something, I quietly ponder it and wait for God to release it. And sometimes he tells me not to tell. <laughs> I definitely need that breakfast with you now. <laughs> thing is, um, so you know, it's freezing. Somebody asked a question on what wombing is. Wombing is birthing, and when we talk about fruitfulness, it's not just about children. It's about destinies, visions aspirations, um, plans, life purpose. So that's wombing. But Michelle, you just you just released a book on the power of being a woman. What's a fi what would a five minute summary sound like? Well, when I wrote the book, it's actually a rebranding of the book. It was very successful in its first printing years ago. And I felt that it was really important at this time to have the dialogue again. We have a lot of women rising in power around the world. There's a lot of conversation about empowering women. And I'm always wondering, empowering us to do what? We're already powerful. You don't do yeah. power, you are powerful. And so um, I felt that it was an important conversation to revisit and clarify God's intention for womanhood so that people can see how powerful that is. You know, we're called human beings, not human doings. And we are at our most powerful self when we're authentically who we are, walking and living and moving and breathing and talking and doing things we're created to do. There's a power in simply being ourselves because each person was designed, crafted, and released into the earth to be a solution to someone's problem, to um, address issues that are going unsolved. And when you see what your part is and you begin to walk in your zone, you know, here's this thing, when, when staying in your lane is not, um, it's not an insult. It's an encouragement yeah. to master what you were created to do. You know, yeah. you can't do anything. Um, or if you could, you can't do it all at the same time. So staying in your lane, I mean, even for me, I do a lot of different things, Charlotte. You know, I know. There's season where at least one thing and I focus on another thing because it's the season for that. When we look at the Proverbs 31 woman, that chapter is very intimidating. <laughs> like, wow, how does this person do all of these things? But that chapter was a chapter about her entire life, which means if we break it down, that this was a woman who understood her season, stayed in her lane in that season, understood the purpose of that season, worked that season until it was time to go to another season. And so when we see ourselves in that line, it releases us to just celebrate where we are right now and not worry about tomorrow. That season's going to come soon enough. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and, and, you know, women are very hard on themselves. I mm -hmm. think that we wound each other and yeah, ourselves. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that comes from, from unrealistic um, uh, expectations yes. you know, of what we think we should be doing versus what God uh, has made for us to do. And remember, he said, is your easy and his burden is right. So now, if you've taken on a bunch of stuff in your flesh and added to the assignment that God gave you, that burden will not be 
in life and your yoke will not be easy. So you want to do a quick self-assessment based on what I just said and ask yourself, have I taken on things that have not been assigned to me in addition to what God proportioned to me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Was that clear? Yes, it was. Are we having some reception issues? Oh, yes, it was. We, we got that. But I was just wondering, okay. so um, for Thirsty Woman, it's really like um, a one-year journey from woundedness to wholeness. And in between, we deal with identity, purpose, wounds. Um, Um, wounding, we deal with, um, um, let me see, weathering storms, how to survive storms and crisis. And I just wanted you to say, what, what's your thinking? What do you think about the project? I think it's amazing. I think okay. it's well needed. I think that the topics you selected are relevant and critical to where we all are right now. So I, I think you're going to have a great success because, mm -hmm. you know, Charlotte, we, we it's it saddens me that so many of us spend so much time in church and are still clueless about how to live life yeah. and how to live through issues. Thank that you. On a daily basis. We are not getting the teaching that we need yet. biblically based but socially relevant. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of emotionalism, yeah. uh, you know, and love a good prophecy. But no, that's what God said. What is He saying right now till I get to what He said? You know, um, these are things that... Mona, I see you, and you know I'm looking for you. <laughs> I see Mona commenting there. <laughs> but go on. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, so I, I, I'm just saying that I, I I, like the idea of it. I mean, when it was mentioned to me, I thought, this was thirsty woman, you know, the woman at the well, yes. my favorite story. Yeah. Me, <laughs> I want that water so I don't have to come here again. I know. Who likes going to the well every day? <laughs> it's metaphoric. But so yeah. many of us as women said we don't want to come back to this place again. Yeah. I'm so sick of this cycle of loss, this cycle yeah. of betrayal. Exactly. Of rejection. rejection, yeah. Well, now I'll send you a request when I'm done with Michelle. Hmm? Okay. No, I was telling Mona, I'll send her a request when I'm done speaking with you. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, so I believe that we all have cycles yeah. that we want broken in our life and that we're in a different time. We're in a different era. If COVID showed us nothing, it is um, clear that we need to do things differently. Yes. That the old system is broken. Yeah. Um, that church can't be the same, that we can't be the same, business isn't the same, education isn't the same. Yeah. Nothing is the same. And so we can't return to the same old insanity that we were involved with before. We've got to have new ways of looking at critical issues in our lives, yeah. being critical, even as Christians. Because, you know, God is an intelligent God. He's more intelligent than he is emotional. Yes, yeah. he has deep, but he's got a rationalization and an order for how his universe runs. And once we understand that, then we know that there are systems in place to address every single issue that we have as human beings. When second deep after one says he's it's talking about life in the natural as well as the spiritual element of getting to the place where we're godly, where we're a reflection of who he is, and we look like God. There's a transformation process that we're all in on a consistent basis. And everything that we face in life, Charlotte, is geared to transform us into God's image. Yeah, exactly. So when we deal with you, like woundedness and rejection and loss, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be closer to Him. It's supposed to be in order to rise above our challenges. So um, I think that it's great. I'm excited about it. And anything you need me to do, you know I am there. <laughs> I will find you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing you. 
And um, we will do breakfast next week, and then we can talk in detail about this and see how we're going to roll it out, and also talk about the book. God bless you, Michelle. God bless you. Love you plenty. Thank you. <laughs> so, guys, you, you had Michelle, and um, like you're uh, realizing, um, you would definitely need a notebook and a pencil for all the webinars we're going to be ha having because they're going to be so packed with knowledge and information. Um, somebody, is, Mamifia says she can't, how do you get the link to join the project? You couldn't access it? Okay, it's there, but if you can't, send, send, send a private message and my team will get back to you and they'll send you, um, yes, that's my sister beside me, they'll send you the link. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she popped up in my house and hey, so she's here. Let me try and see if I can send Mona a request. And then, yeah, get Mona. Um, yeah, so you would need a notebook, certainly. I would have a notebook. Hey, finally. Hi, Mona. <laughs> I've missed you. <laughs> Miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> Miss you. Bye. Mrs. Monacorte, lovely to have you as always. And um, you, I know you've been following the discussions. I have just two questions for you. One has to do what you think about Thirsty Woman. And then, okay, three questions. Second <laughs> one is because I have you scheduled to speak about wealth, building wealth, preserving wealth. Um, the need for financial independence and passing on wealth to the next generation. I'd want you to speak a bit about that. And then just the issue of your advice to younger women. I know you get asked that a lot. And don't be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. I'm not here to be nice. I'm here to make sure <laughs> that we all grow together. Yes. As you said, right from being wounded to being whole and that's just lovely um, i want to just start by a, a little phrase that i've always read around the area it's always said that if you like a flower you pick it but if you love a flower you water it and you watch it grow yeah you know and one thing i've noticed about us women we constantly feel the need to possess things i must possess my hope possess my man, possess my children, and we end up suffocating the people and the things that we love. And getting frustrated. And trying to possess them and getting frustrated in the process. Yeah. I would say that, or I would humbly submit that. Okay. Let that is. thing go. Yeah. That love, and it will fly back to you, it will sit on you, whether it's a butterfly, it's a bird, it's a person. They will be attracted to that freedom that you exhibit. And that is basically the love of God. And that is who you are. I am what I am. is the God of love. Yeah. And I just would encourage all of us to start, first of all, by loving ourselves. Mm -hmm. Everything depends on you. No one can hurt you unless you give them permission to. Yes. No one can beat up on you unless you give them permission to. Yes. So love yourself. When you are asked the question, who do you love the most? Most women, like you said earlier, come out with children, my husband, trying to be the superwoman. Yeah. That will not make you the superwoman. The superwoman is the woman who loves herself and puts herself first. Because when you do that, then you are watered and you can water others. You cannot water from a tree. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that, number two, when we discuss wealth, that we will discuss where to start from. I know most people are thinking money, uh, this, that it's capital. Really about yeah. you, your inner strength. Yeah. What is in your hand? Exactly. It may be something very yeah. small, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So long as you are willing to become wealthy, that desire to be wealthy, my darlings, you will become wealthy. You will it's all about the mind, the mindset. Next generation. 
Yeah. Because it will be in the mind. Yeah, because it's a mindset, yes. Yeah. Wealth does not necessarily mean money. Mm -hmm. but it means that total prosperity, the well-being of body, soul, and mind. Yes. That you will lack nothing. That you will not owe anyone. That you will be a giver. That, that mm -hmm. you, will, you will just give. And you will have everything that you want. I'm glad you talk about the vision board. Yeah. Because it will help us to focus. Mm -hmm. And I did hear Michelle talk about focusing on one thing at a time. We like to multitask, that's fine. But there are times when the desire must be intense. And therefore, you must focus on that one thing. Then the last question is to the young ladies. Mm -hmm. Young ladies, grow your inner strength. And each topic in each month is meant for you. Grab it, make it your own. And, and just exude all the prosperity that comes with it. But mm. remember, don't grab, don't be greedy, don't be envious. Just love yourself. You are beautiful and perfect as you are. Never think otherwise. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Mona. You, you've run through almost everything on Thirsty Woman from wealth to um, self-value, self-worth, um, issues around identity and purpose. And this is really what it is about. And you cannot be um, excelling in one area of your life and then the other area is not doing so well. For you to, to have a life of wholeness and wellness, you need to manage all these different aspects. And I'm really happy that you talked about the superwoman syndrome. You meet so many women who want to be the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect cook, the perfect worker, the perfect aunt, the perfect daughter, especially when you have older parents. And they need to remember that superwoman is alive. Sometimes all you need is a nap. And women need to take better care of themselves and put themselves ahead. Self-care is not a bad word. And um, like we always remind them, when you are in the airline, even if you are there with your two-year-old child, they tell you to wear your own oxygen mask first before you put it on the child. You can't. You can't give people out of an empty tank. Your own tank needs to be full. You need to be watered. So I'm really happy you brought that up. So thank you. And um, we have a long outstanding lunch. <laughs> Hoping we can do it soon. <laughs> Say something that belongs to you is getting into my possession tomorrow. I'll bring it to you and then we'll do our lunch. So thank you, Mona. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. And thank you for blessing our ladies. Bye. Bye, darling. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, I'm so happy we've done this lunch. It's going to be a phenomenal um, 12 months going. The first webinar is going to be on Sunday, about this time next. Yeah. I think we're going to do 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Sunday. So we'll send you details for registration and we're going to be dealing with the topic of wounded women. What do we mean when we say women are wounded? And just remember that every woman has a wound. Everybody has a wound, we're all wounded. But we'll be start to, um, on Sunday by examining the different kinds of wounds, wounds from childhood, wounds from relationships, wounds from siblings, <laughs> wounds from I was brought here yes. under duress <laughs> she's a wounded woman <laughs> wounds from peers um, wounds from the workplace and wounds from church a lot of women go to church for healing and actually get wounded in church so we're going to look at all that we start off with wounded women just identifying the wounds and creating a path to healing and the week after that like i said earlier january is the month where we're going to have more than one webinar just because the topic of woundedness is so big um then after the following sunday we would look at um wounds from loss whether it is um, rejection by a man um divorce um, death of a partner, wounds from loss. Those can be very deep wounds and they can affect you for a long time. So we'll look at that and how you can start to heal from that. And then in the third week, we'll look at wounds from sexual abuse, sexual assault, rape, um, 
I would have loved to do a session on wounds from public service, but um, I won't. <laughs> so, <laughs> the 13th month. <laughs> the 13th month. We'll do, we'll do wounds from public service. That's a whole chapter. Um, so please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Charlotte Say. And then there's a Thirsty Woman Close Group on Facebook. Please send a request to join. And then the links for the webinars are in my uh, my Facebook bio and my Instagram bio. And I need to say this, part of the Thirsty Woman project is that there will be five minute videos every day to encourage, to motivate those who subscribe to it. So we'll be rolling that out in February on the Prime Nuggets platform. So please um, bear that in mind, you'll be subscribing and you'll get five minute videos every day from me and it's meant to encourage you, it's meant to support you, it's meant to inspire you, it's meant to motivate you, and it will be on all these topics that we're talking about. So, for instance, the month that we're dealing with building wealth, we will deal with all that in the daily nuggets as well. So um, I, I'm really grateful to all of you who joined us. I'm grateful for the comments. I'm grateful for the chairs. I'm grateful for all the prayers. Um, some people have worked really, really hard on this, and I must appreciate them. Belinda, thank you. Glory, Janet, Adwa, thank you. Getrude, Tega, thank you. Omolade, thank you. Inaingo, Eneni, Hebele, Tony, thank you. You all have been my sounding board. You all have been extremely supportive. And the only guy in our Thirsty Woman group, Chris, thank you so much. I really appreciate the love and the support, and I'm really, really excited, and I can't wait to roll this out. And to all the lovely, amazing ladies, who joined me today, Akene, Michelle, Mona, thank you. And they've all agreed to speak during the webinars, thank you. I think for the month of January, our confirmed speakers are um, Mrs. Idio Gufere on wounded women. Then I have um, Mrs. Linda Ampa of Cuddling Fashions, thank you, Linda. We have Mrs. Barbara Mahama, we have Ms. Osaya Lele, thank you, ladies. We have Ms. Belinda Smith, and we'll all be talking about the journey to healing. And we have a few male guests who would pop in at some point uh, when we're dealing with the power of words, the creative force of words. We have some there. Um, Lan, Coach Lan with the Catalyst, thank you. You've been very supportive. And so I'm really grateful to everyone who supported this project and who has helped us get it to the point of birthing it today. Um, I know that in the days and months to come, lives will be liberated, souls will be satisfied, spirits will be nourished, um, and we're praying to God that for all the women who come here, you will truly find a place where you are watered, where you feel well, where, you've, where you are supported to, to aspire towards wholeness. And um, I can't wait for our grand celebration in the month of December, God give us life. So God bless all of you. I wanted to add, um, oh, to add yes. um, predominantly young women, but we really it's would not, like yeah. to hear from, we would like to also have older women on the platform. Because, there's no age limit. Yes, there's no age limit. So mm. please ask your moms, your aunts, you know, anybody you feel, you know, is thirsty. You know, please get them to subscribe because we're getting older women who are uh, who feel lost. Yeah, and they need especially to you know place. you get to a point where you've always identified as a mother. Yeah, and, and then all of a sudden your children are out of the house; yeah. they don't need you anymore. It can be very disconcerting for a woman, and you start wondering, "What am I doing? What does, is my life? Um, doesn't my life have any meaning anymore?" And we really would like to have, I think 25 to 30 is a good age to get in, but there's really no upper limit. And even for the, if you are 70 years old and you want to join, we would love you to join yes. because you can also share experience with yes. other women. Remember that it is a circle of support for women. The younger women need the experience of the older women. And the older women need to be um, need to know that they are still of value to the younger ones, and that um, it's never too late to change the direction yeah. of your life. So, or to learn financing. Or to learn, yes. 
and okay. maybe you have wealth, but you don't know how to pack yeah. it on how to preserve it. So it's a good, still a good place to come. For the Facebook people, I promise to do better on Facebook. <laughs> I'm really gonna try. Instagram has always felt like the primary constituency, but <laughs> I think I'm loving the vibes from Facebook. Facebook so I promise to do better. Yeah. And there are a lot of Facebook um, fake accounts in my name. I think that is what kind of put me off. But um, this is the official one and I would do better. I, I commit to that. So I would be seeing all of you and maybe we'll do a few more Facebook lives to the exclusion of Instagram, just to make up for um, <laughs> how the Facebook people have been treated today. So thank you guys, God bless you all. And I look forward to seeing you all on the Thirsty Woman Drive. Bless you and have a brilliant, brilliant 2021. Bye-bye.